Now to present, moving on to the third Carnegie Medal today in philanthropy to Evelyn and Leonard Lauder is another special pair of individuals who will be presenting. First, a man with a long and distinguished career in music, starting as a cellist himself with the London Symphony Orchestra, where he would go on to stay for 35 years, moving into senior positions there, uh, ultimately as its managing director, taking on a variety of critical assignments. And then six years ago, becoming executive and artistic director of New York's own Carnegie Hall. Please welcome Clive Gillinson. Mr. Gillinson is joined by someone I consider myself lucky to have as a friend. He's a journalist, an author, a thought leader, and convener, the former editor of Time magazine, the author of best-selling books about Einstein, about Benjamin Franklin, and one about to be released about Steve Jobs. The former CEO of CNN, where he was my boss, currently the chairman of the board of Teach for America, chairman of the federal government's broadcasting board of governors, and so many philanthropic endeavors, including his beloved New Orleans. Since 2003, he has been president and CEO of the Aspen Institute, that remarkable, formidable organization he has taken to even greater heights. Let's welcome Walter Isaacson. Your boss? Yeah. Never, 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 never. A few days ago, Leonard Lauder wrote a piece in the Wall Street Journal that talked about the need for immigration. And he pointed out that more than 40% of all Fortune 500 companies uh, had been started by recent immigrants to the United States. And even more so in recent years, whether it be eBay, Yahoo, Google, and others. Certainly it was true of the company that his mother, an immigrant from Hungary, founded. Why do I raise that? Because Mr. Thompson has reminded us that philanthropy means love of fellow man. So I think that that ties in to what we're honoring today. There are two types of people, really, who are successful. Those whose instinct are to be rather exclusive, to say, I've made it to the top, let me pull up the ladder, let me close the door. And those whose instincts are to be inclusive. People who have a generosity of spirit, who say everybody should be able to partake. Not just the generosity of philanthropy, but of spirit, of love for fellow man. And I think that's reflected not just in the philanthropy and charity of Evelyn and Leonard Lauder, but in the way they live their lives and the values that they embrace. So it is my pleasure to read the citation of the Carnegie Medal of Philanthropy for Evelyn and Leonard Lauder. Your passion for improving people's lives is legendary, especially here in New York City. Leonard, it was in late 1946 that your mother, Estee Lauder, started the business with four products and a belief in the possibility of beauty for all women. Later, explaining the company's extraordinary success, she said, I didn't get there by wishing for it or hoping for it, but by working for it. That's something Andrew Carnegie could have said. Like your mother, you gave the best to your company for more than 50 years. It has expanded, so there are now 29 brands available in 140 companies. In addition to business acumen, perhaps your passion for beauty, beautiful art, and your willingness to work tirelessly for worthy causes are also legacies of Estee Lauder herself. Leonard Lauder, as a connoisseur of contemporary art, you are chairman and emeritus and a major benefactor of the Whitney Museum, donating millions in important works of art, as well as monetary support and acting as an avid fundraiser. You're also a leader outside of the art world, the co-founder and chairman of the Alzheimer's Drug Discovery Foundation, a generous donor to the Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania, a member of the Council on Foreign Relations, a trustee of our beloved Aspen Institute, and if I may say, with the Crowns and the Pritzkers and the Lauders, and Bob Steele, we feel uh, very honored uh, as part of the Aspen Institute here. 
and a member of the President's Council on Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital. Together with Evelyn, you gave $50 million to establish the Evelyn Lauder Breast Center of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, which offers advanced outpatient services for cancer diagnosis and treatment. Evelyn Lauder, you are a marvel as well. Not only are you senior, are you senior corporate vice president of the Estee Lauder Companies, you're a dedicated philanthropist, especially in the fight against breast cancer. You're the founding chair, chairman of the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, which has raised more than $330 million to support researchers around the world. You famously helped invent the pink ribbon, which I know Leonard is wearing, now an iconic symbol of breast health. And you oversaw the distribution of close to 115 million of these pink ribbons worldwide. To focus global attention on breast cancer prevention, you also spearheaded the Global Landmarks Illumination Initiative. Now, during the month of October, pink lights shine on dozens of buildings and historic landmarks, from the Taj Mahal to the uh, Empire State Building. Many women around the world are alive and healthy today because of your unwavering commitment to this fight. A century ago, Andrew Carnegie expressed no doubt about what mattered in life, and his words hold true today. A man's first duty is to make a competence and independence, but his whole duty does not end there. It is his duty to contribute to the general good of the community in which he lives. Evelyn and Leonard Lauder, for your countless contributions to our community and to our world, we offer our seer, sincere admiration and thanks. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Walter, and thank you all for being here. Uh, this is indeed a great, great honor. And uh, uh, for those of you who can see me on TV, I look like the battered husband. <laughs> I am not battered. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I just, I've just come back from London, and I took a wonderful tumble, <clears throat> fell on my nose, <clears throat> and this is the best way to get a nose job. <laughs> and. Uh, However, I bring you greetings from my wife, Evelyn, who many of you know, uh, who couldn't be with us today. She's, she's ill, and uh, she's home. However, I couldn't leave this morning without my pink ribbon being adjusted and, and my tie, using the Navy expression, being too blocked. But Evelyn has worked tirelessly uh, to make sure that breast cancer awareness and breast cancer research is being done around the world. Uh, currently, uh, BCRF, which she founded, uh, supports 182 different researchers around the world who are doing God's work and doing work for each one of you here in this, in this room. Uh, as for, uh, for myself, uh, you, you've heard Walter's introduction, but there's something that he mentioned today which uh, I feel particularly strong about, which I'd like to share with you, and that is the concept of philanthropy and immigration. Andrew Carnegie was born in Scotland, and he was an immigrant to this nation. This is long before the doors to this nation closed. Uh, Vartan Gregorian, who is my old friend and associate from the days of the University of Pennsylvania and going on and on until then, he is also a fugitive from the Holocaust in Turkey. My wife, Evelyn, was born in Vienna, Austria. Her parents fled uh, right after the Anschluss in 1938, came to London in time for the London Blitz, were there during the Blitz, then came across the Atlantic in a convoy uh, where one of the ships in the convoy was torpedoed. They arrived here. If the doors to America had been closed, I would not have had a wife. Gary and William, my two sons, and our grandchildren are here. You wouldn't be here simply because the doors to America were open. And if you look at the program today, so many of the people who will be receiving their awards today 
are either immigrants or children or grandchildren of immigrants. The My brother Ronald, who you'll be meeting in a bit, uh, he and I both went <clears throat> to the Bronx High School of Science, public education, and what we heard again and again and again was the phrase, the melting pot, the melting pot. The melting pot is what made this nation great. It is what allowed Andrew Carnegie to do what he wanted to do. It's what allowed Vartan Gregorian to do what he wants to do and many in this room to do what you want to do and what you feel is necessary to, to help this nation. So in the spirit of the Carnegie Award and Andrew Carnegie, I urge you all to op help us open those doors and open your hearts to these new immigrants who can help make this nation great and who can help give back to this nation the way our parents taught us how to do in which I hope we'll all learn how to do. Thank you all. Thank you, Leonard Lauder, for reminding us what immigration is all about. And we wish Evelyn well, and uh, we're also glad that your spill wasn't any worse than it was. Up close, his nose looks just fine.